The Nintendo company loves surprises. They are such big kids at heart when it comes to how they run their business. What they care about the most is fun. The fun that we have when we play their games. It's why they make games that are fun for all ages. It's why they make toys like the Amiibo on the Nintendo Labo. Or Labo, however you pronounce the freaking thing. They don't care as long as you have fun with it. Which is why, again, I believe they love surprises. Like dropping random games on the eShop at a moment's notice for you to just go out and play. No long build up to the game, not seeing a trailer a year or two beforehand, just throwing it out there as a surprise for everyone to enjoy. And that's what happened a couple days ago with Pokemon Quest. And this is what I said when I first saw the game. I think it looks interesting, not for me, but I'll try it. And then after that, here's what I said in the video once I had time to reflect and look at the game some more. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, that's all well and good, but I couldn't give a crap. And I wouldn't blame you. It's not exactly strictly Pokemon. So if you're a Pokemon fan, there's, there's, you don't, it's not automatically that you're going to love that. I get it. I think I made it pretty clear that I had no strong feelings one way or the other. I wasn't going to hate on it because I hadn't played it. But looking at it, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. But I thought I knew one thing for sure, and that's that I'll dabble in it, but I probably won't get addicted to it. I, I, I think that's pretty much the case. I don't think I've even played it that many hours. <laughs> okay, I haven't played it that many hours. That was a little bit of trickery on my part because when I go to the game, it says first play two days ago and won't actually tell me how many hours I've played it. But I would love to know because I sat up all last night playing it for like five or six hours. And that was my second or third time playing some of this game. I got addicted. I played it and played it and played it. I would play it more right now if I could. I'm not done with it. I'm in no way done with it. In fact, I even caved and bought all the DLC because I wanted to get those cooking pots and attract Pokemon quicker. So right now, I want to talk about this game, Pokemon. Pokemon Quest, what makes it so addicting, why this free to play game is actually so much fun, and if I think the DLC is worth getting. I mean, I spent $35 getting everything. Is it worth $35? Oh, let's find out. <laughs> Now, one thing I'll say right away is I think they messed up by calling it a free to start game. I kind of get what they were going for, but the initial reaction I had from that was eventually you'll have to pay. As soon as I saw free to start, I imagined, okay, you can start playing for free, but eventually you'll have to pay to keep playing. So far, I didn't have to pay for a damn thing. In fact, the only things you can actually buy and pay for in this game are things that just speed up the progress of your playthrough a little bit, like finding more Pokemon, which actually helps you level up, and we'll get to that. So I would call this a free-to-play game, not free to start, not pay to win, not pay for anything. You could literally play this for free. And in fact, something else we'll get to, I think buying all the DLC cheapened the experience for me a little bit. There are huge advantages to buying it all, which is ultimately why I decided to, but it did cheapen a lot of the experience. So for the most part, I would say this is a completely free to play game. Nintendo, that's not a bad deal. Okay, so the game starts and you get to choose between five Pokemon. Pikachu, Eevee, Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, the usuals. Then you have the first bit of the island unlocked, the green area where all the fighting Pokemon are. And the world is broken down into levels, and each level gets increasingly more difficult. Now in this first world and all its stages, you don't have to worry about all these numbers all that much. Whether or not you have enough power to defeat it. It's teaching you all these things, you're pretty much overpowered for all of it. I highly doubt you'll die in your playthrough. So this first part of the game is really easy. But almost immediately, as you move past that and start unlocking the other areas, you will have to start taking those numbers into consideration. If it says you need a power level of like 5,000 and you only have 4,000, there's a good chance it's going to be pretty freaking hard. So that did lead to me going back to some of the other stages and replaying them to level myself up, to find more strength and health abilities that you can equip to your characters to boost their power a little bit more. And while you go out and do these stages, every time you do a stage, even if you've done one before, your cooking pot timer decreases one, and eventually when you're still is done, a new Pokemon will show up. So the more you replay the old levels or just play in general, the more Pokemon you will have come along. Now the way the game works is pretty interesting. You have your party of up to three Pokemon and they walk through each stage on rails, meaning they move themselves forward and the only thing you have to worry about is their abilities. Which at the start might seem like you don't have too much control. It might seem like all you have to do is press these buttons and wail on the enemies and if you're strong enough you'll beat them. 
But as you go through and you start getting to the harder levels, you need to be more aware of what abilities you have and when to use them. For example, in my playthrough, I use Onyx and I use Lapras. Lapras has an attack that pushes all the enemies forward, whereas my Onyx, his strongest attack, targets on one spot and does a huge rock tomb on that spot. So if I activate Onyx's ability and target that spot and then use Lapras's ability, it'll push everyone away and then no one's going to get hit and I have to wait for that to go on cooldown. And when it's coming down to the wire and every ability counts and every hit counts, that's not what you want. There is an auto play button as well where if you hit it, you can literally put the switch down and the Pokemon will do their moves for you and they will walk around for you. Which at first I thought was strange. That's just the, the game playing itself. Why would I ever do that? But where it actually comes in handy is when you're replaying those older levels and you really don't feel like interacting with it too much. You can just set it to auto and they'll breeze through. But if you try and do the auto on the harder levels or even some of the levels that you can beat fairly easily if you're paying attention, I find that when you put it on auto, they have no freaking clue what they're doing. So unless you definitely are strong enough, that auto play is useless, but it's really helpful for going through the older levels and leveling up. Especially if you have a Pokemon that's a really low level and you want to level them up and train them in quick succession, you can just get the game to play itself and level itself up for a while. I know it sounds like, why would I want the game to play itself? But trust me, when you've been playing this thing for four, five, six hours and you want to grind to get stronger, it's nice to have that option. Now, a huge part of the game that makes it so addictive is how random it is. Something I only briefly touched on was that cooking pot. So while you're going out in the world and you're battling and you're doing things, you get berries. You put the berries into the pot and depending on what mixture, like if, for example, if you put all red berries into the pot, you will most likely have a red Pokemon show up, but it's completely randomized. Sometimes there'll be two Pokemon, you never know. And there's all these different kinds of recipes that will attract different kinds of Pokemon. And it's all about experimenting and finding what does what. If you know you want a kind of Pokemon in particular, you can always try and aim for that, but you never know. And even if you do get the Pokemon you want, let's say you really wanted Charmander. Well, I've had two Charmanders come by in my playthrough. One was a level one, which had a really cool move. It had Ember, it was really strong, it was a fire move. But then my other one that came through was like level 15 or something like that. But its move was it was like frail or, or power up, something just really, essentially it was useless and I couldn't use it. So even if you get the Pokemon you want, it's still random as to what ability it gets. And that gets addictive and you and that's why I ended up buying the DLC because with the, each of the DLC packs, you get an extra cooking pot, which means more often, I mean, almost every three or four times I finished a stage, I would have a ton of Pokemon rock up and I had my pick from the litter. And that's kind of what was addicting. It was really exciting to see what Pokemon was going to rock up, what their abilities were. And then if you don't like a certain Pokemon, if you have doubles, there's a training area where you can pick a Pokemon that you want to train up. Like for me, I'm training up my Charmander to be a Charizard and my Eevee, and you can put them in the slot and then pick whatever Pokemon you don't want and they'll battle against them and you'll lose those Pokemon but your other Pokemon will level up. Actually, I actually thought that was really cruel the first time I saw it. It took me a while to get my head around it. When I started getting all my Pokemon coming in and I had too many to even fit in the box, I was like, sure, get rid of them, get rid of them. But the first time I was like, oh man, I just got my first Geodude and I have to get rid of him like that. I need to battle him and he'll leave. How upsetting, but you, you get used to it eventually. Now, when you start playing for free, you get five battery charges, which means for every battery charge, you can play a stage. You play five stages, you run out of battery charges. Every half an hour you get another battery charge. But to be honest, it wasn't until my third playthrough that I even figured out that's how it worked. Because I was just playing and playing and playing and I never ran out of battery charges. It does take a while to run out. In fact, by the time you've used all five, you've probably got another couple back. It wasn't until I sat down and did my five hour session and got two or three hours in that it said you're out of battery charges and it finally clicked. And it's worth pointing out that every 24 hours you get 50 tickets. And make sure you claim those when you sign on because to recharge your battery costs 25 tickets. So every day you play, you get two full battery charges, which means you have 15 stages you can play. That's honestly a couple hours of gameplay right there and that's before you start getting tickets for everything else. You seem to get 10 tickets or 5 tickets or 15 tickets every few seconds when you start completing the challenges. If I was just using those daily tickets to recharge my battery, I could keep playing and playing and playing. There's honestly no reason to spend money on this game. There is a limit to how much you can play, but the game throws so much at you to be able to recharge it that you can just keep recharging it anyway. The only reason to spend the DLC is to get all these cooking pots to attract more Pokemon. Everything else is just 
a nicety that you really didn't need. Out of all the free to play games I've played, this is the most free to play. It's extremely generous in everything it gives you. So a lot of the fun for me is that randomized addictiveness of what's going to come next, what Pokemon am I going to catch next, am I going to get a shiny rock up at my front door, but buying all of those cooking pots, it did cheapen that a little bit, because now I went from every now and then one would rock up and it was really exciting, to oh now I have so many Geodudes and so many rats I need to start getting rid of all of them. It's not a bad thing and I would rather have it this way, but it did cheapen that excitement just a little bit. And the gameplay itself, at its core, I thought at the start, I'm like, this is so simple, I'm gonna get bored of it, but somehow it just is fun. You play every one of these stages and at the end there's a boss fight and it's huge and it has a huge life bar and a lot of them become really challenging and really difficult, like these giant raids I'm trying to take down with my Pokemon. Some of them I try again and again and again, have to go away, level up and come back and then when I finally defeat it, it's very rewarding. And getting that right combination of Pokemon too, that's also rewarding making sure you have a nice mix of abilities and types and then unlocking all the little stones that you set into place to level them up and balancing all that in the way that you want and powering up their abilities in the way that you want, the way that suits your playstyle the best. I would literally try a stage and completely bomb at it and think, wow, I didn't expect that to be so hard. Mix around my stones a little bit, change up my team, maybe one character, and suddenly I breezed through it like it was nothing. So there is a lot of strategy that goes into it when you start combining all of the elements that I've talked about. Ultimately, for free, I think this is a really great game. It feels super polished for what it is. Not surprising since it's Nintendo and Pokemon and it's not like they do anything bad. But if you've looked at this and thought, no, not for me, it honestly might be better than you thought and I recommend actually at least trying it again considering it's free. I can very easily see a lot of people hating it and that's fine, but I think it's actually pretty good for what it is. The DLC on the other hand, that was probably too much money. It's all around a more enjoyable experience for me now that I have bought it. I think for this digital download of the DLC, 20 bucks would have been a really, really great sweet spot. And I wouldn't have contemplated as hard as I did if it was 20. It almost would have been a no brainer just to improve my game a little bit. And there are a few more secrets to find and discover within this game, but since it's free, I'll let you go ahead and discover those for yourself. And if you don't have a Switch yet, you can of course wait for the iOS and the Android version, which is coming to mobile pretty soon and you can play it free there. But if you have already played the game, I'd love to know what you think down below. I can see a lot of mixed reactions on this and it's completely fine. Everyone's different. They want different things. They like different things. And this definitely isn't for everyone. I'm just enjoying it and I've played it way too much. Remember to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it because we've become best friends. Leave that comment down below. Thanks to the Patreons for helping me do everything that I do. And uh, yeah, there's nothing else. I was supposed to do one more video, but I'm, I'm, I'm fading. I think I might have to do it tomorrow. Plus, I want to go to the zoo tomorrow. So if I don't get sleep soon, that ain't going to happen. And go see some real Pokemon, some real rats. Do they have rats at the zoo?